Hi, I'm Mike. Many of our ideas for the project list on the ranch come from viewers. Not just to make work, but to actually improve work, which we already end up doing. Today we take a viewer suggestion and turn it into reality on the project list on our Wyoming Life. <laughs> If this is your first time here, this is the project list. Every Tuesday we tackle this board behind me and we get a few things done. Sometimes. Sometimes we just make more work for ourselves, but that's okay. As I like to say, it's job security. If you're interested in exploring the ranch life, make sure that you subscribe. Join us three times a week as we delve into ranching, gardening, cooking on the ranch, and much, much more. Explore the ranch life with us and escape the ordinary. Today, we take a suggestion from a viewer. You've seen me cake the cows. Cake is a pellet of food that we feed the cows in order to get them more protein, which they need, not only for themselves, but for the calves growing inside them. Cake up until this point has been delivered by a cake feeder that we mount on the back of the gator. But a few weeks ago, we got a suggestion saying that it might be easier to put the cake feeder on a trailer and then we would only have to hook up to that trailer. Go cake the cows, then we could come back, disconnect, and have the gator available again for regular ranch duties. The gator is the workhorse of the ranch, and having the cake feeder on the back is a pain. It limits what you can do with it, how much you can carry, and what you can see behind you, which has caused a few close calls in itself. Today, we're going to grab an old trailer that we have here on the ranch, and we've had it for a few years. It's had nothing to do, and today, we're going to put it to work. Another opportunity that we have here is to show why ranchers and farmers never throw anything away. We're going to salvage old parts, connections, and electronics, whatever we need to make this work. All of it is out there somewhere, I hope. So, let's get to it. As often goes around here, what you think will be the easiest part of a project sometimes turns out to be the toughest part. Before this project can even get up and rolling, we need a trailer. And this old trailer was actually given to me years ago. I never really had any plan for it, but today we're going to give it new life as we get it pulled out of a snowdrift and back over to the shop. In its former life, it was used to haul a four-wheeler around, and over this winter, it has froze down a bit. The lock for the ball hitch also has a bolt through it, and I didn't bring over any tools, so we're going to hope that it'll ride to the shop for us without too many problems, which of course there are plenty. My path is blocked to the front, so I have to back the trailer up to get it out of here, and that's when it decides to pop off the hitch. Once it's broken free, however, and reattached, it moves a little bit easier but it's still going to be a problem. One more try, reattaching the hitch, and away we go. Back to the warmer shop where we can begin our project, taking the trailer off the gator and getting the gator out of the way. First, we get some air in the tires. Honestly, I'm surprised they hold air. And adding a bit, I'll take it as a win. The cake feeder itself probably weighs a couple hundred pounds and we need to get it on the trailer, which takes just a little bit of doing. Some repositioning and some brute force, but once it's in place and just in front of the axle to keep a majority of the weight on the front of the trailer, we can attach it to the bed of the trailer using some lag screws. In order to make the feeder work on the trailer, we're going to need a power supply, a battery. When it's on the gator, it hooks up to the gator's battery, and although we could probably run wires back to run it, it'd be easier to have an onboard battery, one that we can charge when we aren't using the feeder, and run it when we are. I have an old battery box up on a shelf, and we can first install that onto the cake feeder. We're also going to need a battery, and I have an extra battery in a cabinet. It's a just-in-case battery, and now it's time to use it. Then we screw the battery box to the bed of the trailer and attach the strap that holds the battery in. I don't have a lid for this battery box, but it'll work for now until I can find one. 
We also need to attach wires from the cake feeder to the battery. In the sales barn, I have a couple old battery terminal connectors. Taken off some piece of machinery that will work pretty nicely. After stripping the wires, we can attach the wires for the battery charger and the cake feeder to the terminals, and then the terminals go on the battery. So far, everything's working nicely. We get a chance to test the battery and the cake feeder fires right up, and it even spins in the right direction. Looks like we got the terminals hooked up right, because if we were to reverse them, the whole thing would spin the other way. The cake feeder features a wired button that turns it on and off, and the wire is definitely not long enough to reach up to the cab of the gator from the trailer, so we're going to have to come up with some sort of extension, with a plug that we can disconnect when we unhook from the trailer. We can do that by disassembling the button and finding out it just has two wires, a simple one-way switch, and now we can attach an unused four-way plug to it, using only two of the four wires. Then, after moving the trailer out of the way, in comes the gator, wiring the other end of the four-way plug to some scrap wire so we can run it into the gator. For right now, we'll run it through the window and the box of the gator up under the seat and under the dash. The button that came with the cake feeder should work well enough and we can take it out of its old housing for installation into the cab of the gator. After attaching wires to the button, we drill a hole for the button in the dash and put it in place. It's time for another test. The button is pressed and the motor on the cake feeder takes off. Now it's time for the real test. Let's go try it with the cows in the field. The cake feeder holds about 400 pounds of cake. We feed cake at the rate of 2 pounds per cow, so today we'll be feeding 300 pounds of cake to the cows. You can buy cake bagged or loose, and because we don't have a bin or a silo to store it in, we buy it by the bag and by the ton, filling the cake feeder one bag at a time. I do have to say though the ramp kind of makes it nice, better than climbing up in the back of the gator with bag after bag of cake. Let's test it one more time. Our feed store recently changed brands of cake, and because the cake feeder was set up for old cake, we might have to adjust how fast it feeds into the chute because different cake is different sizes. There we go, another successful test. And I'm really starting to feel good about today. With a smile on my face, we head out to feed the cows from their brand new cake feeder. The cows cautiously watch as we pull up, opening the chute and getting back in the gator hitting that little button, and away we go. It doesn't take them long to figure out what's going on, and here they come, from seeming like every direction, all wanting to be first in line. It seems to work pretty well. I was a little bit worried about getting through some of the snow, but honestly, the gator had no problem pulling the trailer through. We're gonna have to bolt the feeder to the bed of the trailer as I was bouncing around out there in the field, the lag screws that I had used to attach it actually pulled out, but that's not a big deal. We also still have to route the wiring and solder some connections, but all in all, it's a pretty good first test. Erin's gonna be happy because now she can use the gator for more of her garden stuff as she's getting ready to fire off her early spring gardening adventure. And hopefully, having this trailer mounted cake feeder will make things a little bit easier for me on the ranch as well. We love your suggestions. Keep them coming. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so and hit that bell button so you don't miss any of the notifications. Coming up this week, we have a live stream scheduled on Thursday at 7 p.m. Mountain Time, and we invite you to come join us. We should have an update on the peacock and his prosthetic foot. In fact, uh, we should actually have it here by that time, and we're going to be able to show it to you and show you what it looks like and talk about the next step in the plan to get him up and walking again. Until I see you again, have a great week, and thanks for joining us in our Wyoming Life.